Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the Brownian Notion. I am Ananya. And I'm Gogol. Today we have a very exciting episode for you. Joining us is my very dear friend Tosha Banerjee. We have kind of grown up together and uh, she's closest thing I have to a sister. Yeah, so hi Tosha. How are you doing? Hi, what's up? I'm I'm all good and very excited to join you both. <laughs> I remember the first day I met you you got hit by a football at first <laughs> and then you and then so we we were sitting in the middle of Deshapriya Park which for everybody who doesn't know is a is a very famous park it's it's not really a park it's more like a playing ground you have tennis courts there people play football there and it's in South Calcutta and so uh, we is very important South is very important yes <laughs> we are very proud of being south ka <laughs> no i'm just kidding uh and we we were literally sitting like six or seven of us on the field and just this football comes and hits tosha in the head there's there's <laughs> like a lot of us right so all of us are sitting it's just hits tosha and and then when we are going home she gets hit by a bus this is the first day i <laughs> meet tosha <laughs> You're saying it so casually, like yeah, and then she got hit by a bus. Yeah, this is this is very very normal. Yeah, I think very normal for me. Where if you yes. hang out with me, you will uh, you'll see that I could have potentially died at multiple points in my life, but I just didn't because because you know I've been lucky and whatever. But yeah, he, what he said was. Uh, crazy because there was seven of us and we was all sitting in a circle and it was just me as if my <laughs> head was just blocking everybody else and i got hit by that football which was by the way shot with such strength <laughs> i know because i was knocked out for at least 2 minutes uh, and uh, wow. uh, yeah i had a big uh, bump on my forehead <laughs> and and i i could not think or comprehend anything for like 2 minutes and then when i started walking i was not thinking correctly and i was all loopy and everything and there was a crossing i remember where uh, goal said i was hit by a bus so i was just standing on the crossing and you know how kolkata buses are they will not even give you the indication that where they are going they will just suddenly you know kind of move you will just have to yeah. deal with it right yeah. so i was just standing there minding my own business on the footpath not even on the yeah. on the road i was on the footpath and this bus suddenly uh, you know overtook this car in front it was standing and the bus came super close to me and it just hit me on my arm and i just oh my god and i did a 360 degree flip and i fell and th- there were people like all of a standing uh, in line and we fell like dominoes basically <laughs> <laughs> and the bus driver did not get beat up in true kolkata fashion no 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 he just drove away uh, i'm generally quite reluctant to involve her in work matters because the last time i did so things turned out to be quite interesting so don't know if you should tell that story tosha do you want to come in on that <laughs> yeah thanks for bringing that up by the way uh, <laughs> a little bit of background here so i was i was in college and i was just barely out in the real world totally independent and this was the second year of college and i was seeing a lot of my batchmates they were doing a lot of internships at that point of time and all i did was hang out with gogol and the <laughs> other friends that's all we did we we did that all the time and i felt like am i the only idiot who's not doing anything you know productive with her life and you know i used to feel and there was you know every day we used to meet up and we just used to go through like laughter jokes and everything but then there was nothing productive so one day gogol uh, you know told me that he was he was having this kind of a discussion with his college mates that they are going to start with uh, this non profitable organization and uh, this team of people were led by should i take his name i i, I don't think i should uh, let's just call him prem chopra <laughs> 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 uh, 
beautiful name. So Prem Chopra was the chairperson of the non-profitable organization that Gogol introduced me to. So we started to work towards a seminar that was supposed to happen. So I was diligently going to the work to work sincerely. So then I ended up working a lot with Prem Chopra alone. So initially it was fine, but slowly I started to you know see that he was making a big fuss about what I eat and he would drop me home and he would do weird things around me uh, and i i started to feel very awkward and avoided going to his makeshift office uh, because a it was at his home so i was a little bit uncomfortable after he started you know giving me all that attention so i have one question before we move further prem chopra is not an older man here right like is it yeah i mean depends on what you define as older no i'm saying like a 20 25 year age gap No, uh, no, 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 no. That, that's no, no, no. too. Okay, okay. That's not. That's not. Because fair. I had the image of Prem Chopra in my head all this <laughs> no. time. But okay, sorry. Continue. No, no. I think he was uh, late twenties, something like that, right? Tosha. Compared to me, he was a uh, ten year uh, kind ten of. Ten year uh, age. Yeah, yeah, okay. age. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was a kid, like uh, so. For for me, he was quite old. Um, okay. But anyway, but not like <laughs> he was not a middle aged man. So no, not that. <laughs> Even if I, you know, kind of. avoided going to his makeshift office and his home he would come at my place show up at my place unannounced this one day he just ended up being at my place and uh, at 8 am in the morning and uh, he made my mom cook breakfast for him it was so weird <laughs> the confidence <laughs> <laughs> yeah and my mom was super weird at all say why is your like boss showing up at 8 am in the morning to and asking for breakfast so like is your company not doing well or like it's not a company it's a non profitable organization and then he made kheer for me and planned a puja for my birthday and i'm an atheist person i i'm not sure where he got that vibe from <laughs> and um, he was going to treat all my friends to a movie and lunch i was super uncomfortable so i said no to all of that but he wouldn't stop there of course uh, otherwise the story would have been very boring so uh, he ended up at my place at 9 pm one evening it was oh, wow. very very late at night there with this huge sketch of mine uh, that he wanted to give me and it was so <laughs> creepy and i was so mad at prem chopra that he <laughs> that he forgot Uh, that I completely forgot that I had some milk sitting on the stove. So I started blasting Prem Chopra left, right, and center, and I wasn't giving him any gaps to say anything. I couldn't stop shouting for two hours, and the milk was burning all this while. The smoke <laughs> coming out from the kitchen. At one point of time, I think Prem Chopra was legitimately trying to tell me that something is burning, and I kind of yelled back like, "Shut up, you burn in hell!" So after two hours of yelling and my entire apartment being fogged by smoke, I just asked him to leave at about eleven, eleven thirty p.m. in the wow. night, and I spent my pent up rage in cleaning the blackened and burnt saucepan all night, which, by the way, now shines as a silver coin. Oh, you still have it. I have it, and I have told my parents that when I get married, they should send it as a tattoo because I am very <laughs> proud of it. That, nice. that is the result of my perseverance and my hard work. You should invite him to your wedding. No thanks. I don't want any Prem Chopra at my wedding. I told Gogol this during this entire phase. I told him that he is making me very uncomfortable, and all Gogol would do is laugh. He wouldn't help me <laughs> at all. He would just laugh. No, do we? <laughs> to, to be honest i did i didn't know so i was gone for a while i don't remember why i think i had semester exams or something like that so i was gone for a while and i just heard a bit uh, about what was happening but i didn't know so much about that he was coming to your place with a sketch and the dessert and all that i didn't know so much i i got to know about it a bit later i don't know something happened at that point i i don't quite remember I just knew he was creepy. I was like, okay, that's normal creepy for him. I <laughs> didn't know that. <laughs> But did you did you know Prem Chopra before this or no? I was studying somewhere. I was studying Java, learning Java somewhere, and Prem Chopra was actually also learning Java there. And then we we got talking, and actually, I thought he was a decent guy, the run of the mill creepy. But I didn't really think yeah. that he would be this creepy, you know. Otherwise, of course, I wouldn't have introduced Tosha to him. But a uh, Google but, should pay for my therapy sessions, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, you should. Uh, so, how do you know Tosha? So, this is a very funny thing. 
So basically, I know Tosha because she dated one of my close friends. But at least for a while, it turned out to be in a certain way that we got more close. Me and Tosha got more close than I was to Shagnik because Shagnik wasn't living around us and we would hang out a lot every day, literally every day. We got very close. Tosha is very silent while you keep saying you're close, you're close. He's like... <laughs> Okay. Those can't be close. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I took pride in the fact that when you know, kind of uh, Shagnik introduced us, and post that phase, it was just us. So he was nowhere there. Although I think we met to plan his own <laughs> Shagnik's birthday, but then we took yes. it over and we became more close. And uh, Shagnik was not even there in the dynamics, and we had our own thing going after a point of time, and uh, uh, go go. and uh, there was um showvik and uh, pudi we used to hang out like crazy all the time like after college we used to you know meet up every we used to do nothing basically we would sit and we would just talk about like somebody would make uh, jokes about armpit hair or something i don't know it was like <laughs> it was that's why i felt like I- i'm not doing anything productive with my life because the moment <laughs> yeah yeah i see why you thought that <laughs> yeah yeah and i used to think okay this is good but is this what i'm going to do all my life no i have to think about it i have to reflect on my life decision <laughs> but at at some point we did want to do this all our life I, at least i did you know or no <laughs> make jokes about armpit hair but this is a very good segue to what we are going to talk about today it was quite funny that we got very close me and tosha i was not that close to shagnik at that point and life took its turns and uh, basically tosha and shagnik they they broke up but uh, till this day they are very good friends they are very close friends and to be honest they are one of the only couples that i know who remained friends after breaking up and i i always talk about this with both of them and I feel that they both did such an incredible job. I just wanted to talk about it. Of course, it was very difficult, right? But when did you know that? Yeah, you want to have this person in your life as a friend. Well, I I don't think there was a specific point as such, but uh, I mean, we were friends before the relationship happened, mm-hmm. and you know. the the kind of friendships you build in school and school life specifically my school life and high school life was very very difficult because right. I, uh, i lived in a very different place and it was a chaotic situation and uh, having a friend like shagnik at that point of time was a relief for me because everybody else was kind of getting on my nerves and right. you have your own thing while dealing with the syllabus and studies and everything in your high school days uh, and the pressure of getting in good colleges and stuff like that and in between if you have the stress of socializing with other people and that too people do not really care about you or they just look down upon you then it becomes really difficult agnik uh, came into my life at that point of time and uh, it was kind of an escape route for me so i kind of always wanted to have that kind of a friendship with someone and i had that with shagnik and it evolved into a relationship but that friendship never you know died in my heart i don't think it died in shagnik's heart as well so uh, once we got over our relationship it was very difficult because all of you guys were our mutual friends right so every other hangout meant like facing each other so it was very difficult um, but after a point of time i realized uh, that to save the friendship uh, is much more important to me because i wanted that escape route uh, which i had and i prized that so much because i realized that once we get out of this college life become real mm-hmm. adults we will need that escape route again Uh, so I realized it long back. I don't. I don't know. I thank myself for it. I, I think Shagnik did too. Mm. So we tried to stay in touch, and it was an effort from both the sides. I can't take uh, any credit here. So we kind of started speaking, uh, and then we build uh, the little bit of comfort level, and then after a point of time, it was organic because, like I said, the initial friendship was organic, so right. it didn't take take that much of time. to you know build it back so if i heard you right initially you guys did not see each other like you and shagnik and then a year later you guys kind of 
like got back together as friends is is that what you said yeah or was it immediate oh no no it wasn't immediate at all it was kind of difficult and uh, let me honestly tell you it was deliberate because uh, like i said it was not just um, our relationship it was friendship and there were a lot of mutual friends in the line and it wasn't easy because uh, some people around us did not make it easy whenever there is a you know breakup in a group of, of friends uh, there are people who take sides although you don't want them to take sides right. but they still do there were people who took my side and there were people who took chagnik side which neither of us wanted basically but it just organically happened mm. so then they went with their own narratives and then they went crazy with it basically and uh, Uh, we were not prepared to deal with that so both of us you know in terms of dealing with those kind of narratives and those kind of things which were partly true but mostly fictional we thought that it's better that we don't stay in touch at least i thought it was better that i don't stay in touch because the more we would stay in touch the more of those fictional part of the part of the story will grow and people will have more things to talk about so i just didn't want to feed the rumors and stuff like that do you think that if this relationship wouldn't have germinated in your school life when you were like relatively young if this would be like a relationship from two or three years ago when you were already an adult like you are your own self do you think this would still be that easy even if it if it was with shagnik even if the two persons were the same do you know mm-hmm. what i mean yeah 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 i i got it you were talking about like a different phase in life and we would have met um i think it would have been very different it would have been difficult because the way i look at myself the way i have grown up i mean i don't see myself as a grown up adult first and foremost let me clear that up but the uh, th- the way i feel that my mind has evolved um i i was pretty much uh, okay with uh, being on my own and you know kind of uh, trying to you know do everything on my own and uh, i used to think that that is a strength of mine that um, you know okay i can deal with everything on my own i don't need people uh, but what shagnik really bought into um, my life was you guys right the uh, the set of people that i could depend on and i i really learned the fact that i don't have to always deal with everything on my own uh, i can talk to people i can depend on people and uh, shagnik did it you know he was not consciously making that decision that okay torsha has this void in her life so let me fill it with people and stuff like that so he just it was just organic but um i am using the word organic a lot i i just i just suddenly realized <laughs> as long as it sounds organic you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah it, it just happened seamlessly and um, i felt that bit was very essential to i i don't know that was the first milestone of my life that i think i crossed and um, th- that was because of shagnik and i think if uh, if if it were for some other phase of life i think i would have crossed that phase that kind of a milestone or not probably i i don't think i would have the same mindset uh, to you, you know uh, treasure shagnik the way i do now um so he brought a whole lot of change in my life and he did not do it consciously he just he, he just had a lot of friends and he introduced me to them and they just happened to become my friends as well and great friends at that and i have just too many great memories with them really nice conversation tosha but unfortunately we are almost out of time so we would like to move on to the next segment do you maybe have some recommendation for us or something that you did over the weekend or something that you would like to share with us i'm reading this book it's called the last queen mm-hmm. by chitra banerji divakaruni um mm-hmm. and it's a historical novel based on the life of this beautiful commoner uh, jindan who caught the eye of maharaja ranjit singh and became his youngest but the very last queen of india's sikh empire um and she was a commoner but she rose to loyalty through her marriage with the king and she became a warrior ruler only when her son who was merely 6 years old inherited the throne wow yeah and that's very fascinating and history knows when a woman becomes powerful and she becomes formidable 
it challenges the rest of the world it happened right. in the same way with the britishers of the era mm-hmm. it's a true story actually it's a true uh, historical story of a valor and the bond she had with her son and this is a very niche kind of uh, genre when it comes to uh, chitra banerji divakarani right. her she has a unique take on women of history and mythology right. so you read any of her books the palace of illusions the forest of enchantments forest right. of enchantments is again a very good book it's based on ramayan but from sita's perspective and we have heard these tales countless times but looking back in the past from the female characters perspective not from the way in which we've been narrated the stories over and over again but from the female perspective it's so refreshing yeah. um and it's almost like you're hearing the story for the first time and i i really recommend book the last queen and maybe if you can get your hands on any other chitra banerji devakaruni book uh, i i think you'll love it yeah that's that sounds that's very very interesting yeah i actually do have the palace of illusions but i didn't get around to reading it but yeah i also have it like my dad has it and he gave it to me multiple times i just never got around to reading it yeah <laughs> now i want to yeah, yeah. sounds yeah. very interesting yeah thanks thanks for the recommendation yeah it's a, no good, it's a good one no problem Google, do you have any recommendations? Oh, we are doing multiple recommendations today. Because I want to say mine so badly. That's why I'm like. So insane. okay, no, go ahead. I don't. I, I I'll do some other day. <laughs> so so I watched and multiple trigger warnings. Uh, I watched the House of Secrets. It's okay. about a uh, family in Delhi. Okay. Uh, in 2018, 11 people died, and how they died, what happened, uh, the whole uh, drama behind it, and the very important issue of mental health. It's covered very well. It's a mini series. It's three episodes on Netflix, but oh, I would suggest whoever can deal with it because it is dark, and I watch a lot of true crime. Should watch it one episode at a time only. Uh, it it's draining. I think it's a very important topic um, that should have been out there earlier than this. But I'm glad it is out there. I'm glad a lot of people are watching it and they're saying how good it is. So I think it's worth a watch. How is it called again? It's called the House of Secrets. But if you look up the case which I have, uh, it's the Burari murder case. Two nice recommendations for our listeners. this week do write us about your stories as well yeah yeah that would be more fun uh we would even read out one of your stories that we find really amusing or funny or interesting on our podcast That'd yeah be- if we really really uh, find them funny i can even guarantee more than one if they're really that funny so nice. write to us tell us yes and even if it is not your story and you don't want to reveal names tell us stories that you know um yeah write to us our dms are open cool stopping recording cool beans <laughs> Are you friends with your ex, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> are you? Or are you? Are you the terrible ex-boyfriend? No, I try to be friends with my exes, but they don't want to be. Yeah, but the thing is, have you necessarily done anything, or is it like as soon as your exes had somebody in their lives, uh, they just ghosted you a little bit? For me, after one year or one and a half years, if I think that I'm fine being this person's friend. I genuinely mean it. I really do not have any other, you know, like expectations or nothing of that sort from that person anymore. I just, uh, I genuinely want good for them. If you have known somebody so closely, it's just a shame to let them go like completely from your life. I feel because if that person did something good for you, if that person helped you to grow, if that person was something very important in your life, I genuinely feel that person is worth keeping in your life as a friend. Yeah, and I really try that, but unfortunately it has never worked out. What about you? So the thing is with both my exes, I mean I have had 3, but like the first person we were mm-hmm. basically kids. And he did hate me a little bit, so I thought, you know, why even bother? Uh, that has always been my strategy why bother right. it might be uh, helpful for one person but it might be right. helpful for the other like depending how right. the breakup went so with my second ex who you actually know uh, wink yeah. wink <laughs> so he was actually very very 
interested in being friends yeah. initially and then what happened uh, he would drunk dial me and i was going to ask you like have you ever done that to an ex like he would drunk dial me and he would like cry or he would text me and block me immediately so i would get the message after he has unblocked me with just like expletives and i'm like uh, i don't want to be friends with somebody who thinks yeah. like that you know when they are inebriated so it's like what's the point yeah. of being friends so yeah and with the third guy i just no nah, that's not happening is a terrible terrible person if you when you say terrible terrible person the first question that comes to my mind was if you think that person was really terrible why were you even with this guy it's a bit complicated <laughs> bitle complicated so when i was with him it was very like this whole process of where i am the only mm. one giving initially i would be like oh you know let's let's hang out and he was like okay fine like everything for him was like okay fine and then in the end when i said that hey you know do you see us together in the future do you want to get married or do you want to move in or something and he basically said sure but not with you oh wow and that hurt me so much i just couldn't forgive him that's a very shitty thing to say that's a dick move that's like a classic dick move basically yeah. so yeah since then i just couldn't forgive him and it was hard because we were part of this huge group right, right. and like toshka mentioned before that when you are part of a group people start taking sides yeah. and here at least people were mature enough not to take sides necessarily mm. but what would happen is if they're hanging out with him i just would not join and that way i have missed out on holidays right. and like vacation yeah it sucks but that's not what fun. can you do so have you drunk dialed an ex Yes and no. So um I have drunk dialed people while we were still splitting up but after I think a breakup is kind of done with after the the initial first month or something I have never I have a very inflated ego I feel I I I feel a lot of times ego is something that that people think is a very bad thing and it can be a very bad thing in certain scenarios but in this case i feel ego is not a very bad thing it's a it's a good thing in fact if you do not prioritize yourself nobody else will 